In this video, we interview a 20 year veteran contractor in the New Jersey area, and he's going to be talking about some of the uh, biggest mistakes that people make when picking out heat pumps and high efficiency equipment. He specializes in heat pumps and high efficiency technology in the New Jersey area. So if you're interested in watching that full interview, make sure you stay tuned until the end because we'll be linking that full interview at the end. We hope you enjoy. When we come into to service places, this is generally the story we hear. We'll come somewhere where it's a year, two, three after a new system was installed. They're experiencing problems. They're fed up with the contractor who either hasn't come back to deal with the warranty issues or maybe has and he's just band-aiding things and they're realizing, oops, I made a mistake, right? And then you backtrack like, okay, let's see. Yeah, I see what happened here. You, you hired the cheapest guy. He did the cheapest possible job and there's problems. And it's sad because sometimes you got to tell them like, hey, there's no solution for this you got to rip it all out. Like everything about it is bad. I mean, I'd love to save something, but it's the wrong size. It's installed upside down, you know, whatever, whatever it is, right? You're like everything has to go. It's not a great feeling to have that conversation with a customer, but honestly, sometimes that is the solution. And it, 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 you know, it's not, it's not that the customer is bad or anything. I told you. It's just, it's hard to spend the right amount of money, but it's a huge investment. It's a huge investment. And it's an investment that, you know, my area last 15 to 20 years, you're making a 15 to 20 year decision. Take your time. For sure. And if someone's, you know, on that note, like if someone's in the market for a system replacement and they're only going to be in the house for a few years, but they still want, you know, a decent system or something, what do you recommend in, in those instances? Do, do you still push for an inverter or a Dyke and Fit or something? No, no. I, listen, I don't push for anything. I present them with choices. I mean, that's essentially it. And, and th that is a primary question you ask a homeowner. It's like, you know, how, how long are you going to stay here? And, and, you know, when, when homeowners kind of bounce, try to get feedback off of you, I mean, that, that's where you kind of steer and be like, well, you know, honestly, if you're not going to, I mean, yes, you want a system you enjoy for the five years, it's good. But if you're looking to sell and you're not really into high efficiency, you're not looking for some utility payback you're going to get over a span of 10 years, then perhaps that's not the system for you. You just go with the standard single stage system or whatever it is. I also warn people because I have plenty of stories of customers that say, hey, I'm going to sell in two years here. And then five years later, I see the customer and be like, what happened? It's like, ah, we decided to stay. So, you know, just yeah. because you have those plans doesn't mean they always come to fruition. Sometimes you end up staying. <laughs> so <laughs> Totally. Yeah, no, especially, yeah, especially people didn't see interest rates coming. And uh, now a lot of people are, are stuck and not moving because <laughs> it just, it doesn't make sense to move with, you know, the interest rates as, as high as they yeah, yeah, you got to stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to. Yeah, I couldn't afford my house with a with a new eight or seven percent rate right now. That's for sure. So, or uh, I wouldn't want to afford it. Let's put it that way. So, there's a lot of talk uh, now about uh, new refrigerants coming out. Obviously, R four fifty four B, R thirty two. What are your thoughts? And if you're talking to customers right now, because most of the new equipment is is out, but some of it's still not. Like I know some of the inverter products are still on four ten A. What would you say to a customer that's maybe on the fence or or waiting? Or a customer that's worried about the new refrigerants because some have heard that they're you know flammable even though you know 410a is actually 50 percent r32 anyways <laughs> so it's not technically you know that new or all that flammable what would you say to you know customers with those kind of questions or concerns so yeah there's plenty of customers that already know about this we don't have to tell them uh they kind of uh, have done a little bit of research with the flammability thing you, you talk them down from, from from their ledge a little bit i think that's Yes, it's classified as slightly flammable, but you have nothing to worry about. But, you know, I, I have definitely we've had a lot of customers that are pushing to just get their R410A systems now, mainly because, and I sort of agree to, it's kind of my talking point. It's like there's a new generation of equipment coming out. I don't know how well it's going to work. I mean, yes, the refrigerant is proven in other parts of the world, but, but every manufacturer's got a new lineup, new model numbers, new equipment. There's always stuff with new generation things. So, you know, like, yeah, we're going to be the guinea pigs a little bit, the stuff. Uh, I hope not too much. So that's yeah, one aspect right. that maybe why somebody might want to get still the R410A stuff. It's proven. It's been around. The new stuff that's pushed out is, you know, may have some 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 potential issues and warranty issues to work out. But on the flip side, I do have customers that have that told me they're waiting for the new system, waiting because they just want want to ensure that there's longevity to, you know, the getting parts and refrigerant being available. I had a customer, too, that did some research and uh, chose to have their system to be R32 Daikin because of some health concerns with the R54B if it ever leaked in the house. He did his own research, which, uh, you know, he kind of pointed me to it. I'm, I'm not going to argue with the customer. It's his own house that, you know, 
R54B has some chemicals, R32 doesn't, and it's potentially bad to breathe. So everyone's got their their thoughts on it. The performance of all the equipment is supposed to be around the same. Yeah. Um, I'm not terribly concerned about it. And as far as, yeah, I wasn't aware of that with R454B. So the customer was still concerned, even though you explained to them that it was like a sealed system, like there were, it was just in case there was a leak or something in the future. He just... Yeah, it's uh, it's a type of customer who's got all kinds of environmental concern, right? It's it's the mm -hmm. it's the heat customer. They want to make sure they you know they're, they're environmentally friendly. That's you know so yeah, the, the lesser global warming potential of the revisions as well. But yeah, the health concern. Yeah, there's those people that really pay attention to stuff, and yeah, they understand. And I think they understand that like it's not supposed to leak out. But if it does, I don't want it in my house. So why why would I bring it in my house, right? Yeah. Plus they're not, they're not choosing poorly. I mean. We're, you know, one system they were presented was the Mitsubishi one was the, the Daikin. Daikin happens to be R32. They're still getting a great system. Yeah, we, I mean, obviously we sell Daikin too. So we're a big fan of uh, Daikin and, you know, R32 has pre been presented to us as a benefit because it's a single blend versus, you know, R454. But, you know, it's like, yeah, don't get me started on the environmental concerns rabbit hole. Cause I, I go down that personally when I'm just like buying basic stuff like shampoo or like <laughs> deodorant. There's just so much crap in the stuff we buy nowadays. But at least, you know, refrigerant, I just try to tell people the good news is is it's it is contained in a system. So it's it shouldn't leak out. You shouldn't have issues with it. And it's it's relatively easy to uh to mitigate. As far as you know, one of the biggest uh, uh myths that we've ran into, and I mean we still run into it in this day, heat pump. I don't know how much you track the actual heat pump market but i kind of have been watching the data heat pump sales are up something like it's like 75 percent year over year like past few years so heat pump sales are really climbing especially in cold regions one of the biggest myths is that heat pumps do not work in cold climates like yours for example you know they say oh they don't work below 30 or 40 degrees or you know 45 what would you say to someone that's been told that you know, or contractors that say that. No, it's absolutely wrong. So, I mean, this is, this is, you hear it from the contractors that don't have experience with heat pumps. They're trying to talk you out of it because they themselves don't have the, the knowledge or the experience and, and they're a little bit afraid. So if you're looking for that heat pump, that's not the contract. First of all, that's not the contractor you want to hire, right? <laughs> sure, yeah. But yeah, no, it's absolutely, it's absolutely wrong. I mean, uh, yes, there's, there's heat pumps that perform well into the negative. They'll work. How efficient they are is a different question, right? But some people don't care about that, right? And essentially, even in, in my, you know, we're not the coldest climate. We're not Minnesota or anything like that. But, you know, we hit negative degrees every now and then. It, it happens. I'm in a house that has all heat pumps. Uh, in my area, it was like, uh, I think December 20, uh, 2022 was like negative 10 degrees here, right? We had a cold snap here. I think around the whole country, we had that cold snap. Zero performance issues. Don't work. Yeah, they'll be maxed out. They'll work. The real thing is the design temperature, right? If we take an average uh, place here in New Jersey that's got a 16 degree Fahrenheit design temperature, what that essentially means is 99% of the days will be 16 degrees or warmer. The other 1% of the days would be colder. So even if your heat pump was a little bit lacking on the colder temperatures, how often does it happen? So, okay, so you'll get a couple of hours on, on the cold snap where maybe the house isn't uh, doesn't come up to your set point temperature. And then during the day, it warms up, sun comes out, and you're fine. As long as you understand that, as long as those are your expectations, then, then yeah, the heat pump works every time. I'm in a house with no backup. like and, and a lot of my designs have no backup. Like, you don't need it. You just don't need it, right? especially when you do cold weather. Yeah, and you don't have backup electric either or backup furnace, just a straight heat pump. Straight heat pump. Never had an issue. Yeah, and I have multiple units and all that. So if one goes down, to there's others that kind of cover. Now, listen, a, a backup electric strip is nice to have, but sometimes your panel is maxed out, and like there's no. If you wanted to do it, now we have to get a sub panel or upgrade the panel and things like that. So uh, you know, people like there's contractors will say, "Oh my God, you you know you have this heat pump, but you have no backup for it." Like, be careful. I say, I, I'll show you hundreds of customers I have that for years where it's never an issue. And what what about when the system is going through defrost cycle? You still don't have issues where the temp's dropping too much? Is that where you really check the insulation to make sure that the, you know, it's insulated well enough to to at least stay comfortable? Yeah. Um, so, so the type of equipment you pick is also important, right? And I always tell people that, that there's, you look at submittal sheets, you look at those the big things on there, which is, you know, the, the, the COPs and the efficiencies and things of that sort. And that's what people try to focus on. What's not listed there is like, how well does a unit defrost? Because different units have different defrosting technologies, right? Mitsubishi units are super fast defrosting. Like, how, yes. How, the long is, how long is a defrost cycle? 
It depends. It's got, it, it, it's not, you know, like a, like a very simple heat pump, obviously would be like kind of like timed out and we'll go through some, some, you know, whatever 20 minute thing or whatever it is that they kind of have a, a simple way of doing it, you know, once it starts freezing up. But a lot of these smarter Japanese systems, the Daikins, the Mitsubishis, they'll have an algorithm for, you know, like there'll be just sporadic cycles of defrosting, but it'll be quick. It's literally like, you know, three minutes sometimes, right? It depends on the condition, obviously, right? But yeah, you, you, three minutes of not heating your house, unless your house is Swiss cheese, generally doesn't really affect it. Now, if you're pushing your, your heat pump that it's like at its capacity, yeah, you're going to feel some sort of a difference. But that's the reason we choose the systems we choose for the heat pump applications. That X factor again, right? I talked about the X factor being reliability, but I love the side discharge heat pumps better than the American style trash can uh, heat pumps. I observed all the, you know, and Carrier makes a fantastic one, Carrier Infinity and 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 Bosch and all that. I've observed the defrost cycles on those. Those take way longer to defrost. And I, I don't have any data. I mean, I, it's 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 personal observation we've had, but they seem to gather ice around coils a lot differently than the horizontal discharge units. And I don't know if you paid attention to it, but now, now that I said it, you might start paying attention. So we hope you found this content helpful. And as promised earlier, there's a video popping up on the screen that is a link to the full length video. So make sure you check that out if you haven't done so already. And if you're interested in connecting with Chris, we'll make sure to link his information in the description below to integrate comfort systems so you can connect with them if you're in the New Jersey area and looking for a heat pump or high efficiency equipment, or just have some general HVAC questions and are looking for someone that you can trust. And if you're outside of the New Jersey area and you'd like to get a referral to another contractor, uh, we recently launched a program through the HVACdopeshow.com where you can get a referral to a contractor in your area. And that will also be linked in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the algorithm and we will catch you on the next episode.